Welcome to everyone joining tonight. We're going to go ahead and get started. And uh, my name is Dr. Chris Montanero, and we're going to be discussing uh, how to lose weight in a, in a healthy way. And this is incredibly important for a lot of reasons, and it, it can really change the overall level of health on so many different aspects and levels for a lot of people. So we'll jump in and get started here. Good quick question. Are you healthier now than you were five years ago? And then likewise, if you take a look and think about that, do you have a plan to be healthier five years from now than you are right now today? And that's some of the stuff that we're going to be discussing. So can you become healthier by using the secrets to optimal weight loss and maintenance? Nobody really wants to lose anything. So sometimes we have to come down to all the way to the beginning and we've got our the, the psychological aspects to losing weight. You know, we have to enjoy the lifestyles that optimize health and weight maintenance. And if you don't have fun and you make it a part of your life, you'll never stick to it for the rest of your life. You know, this is where Michael Jordan had a fun clause in his contract where you know, if he at any point in time felt like he wasn't having fun playing basketball, he could not play and still get paid for it, which would be nice for most people to be able to do. Um, but really you know, trying to find those things that can keep you exercising and having a lot of fun that we're going to talk about uh, and actually just absolutely enjoy it, that you, you don't want to miss it as opposed to being that arduous, miserable process. And the 2% rule is really important here. A 2% improvement in any aspect of your life will ultimately pay you back a hundredfold. So trying to discuss this a little bit further, in Sports Illustrated, they compared Jack Nicholas and Bob Charles during the course of the year. And Jack Nicholas made 100 times more money, but when you add up all of their scores, their strokes for the year, Nicholas was only about 2% better. So when we're talking about that optimum weight for somebody, even something as simple as one cookie a day adds up to about 5 pounds a year. So being that 2% better and, and just checking that one extra cookie can really make a big difference over the course of a year. So being yourself at your best. But in the U.S., we have this buffet mentality where quality is king. Uh, and even low-income houses uh, will benefit much, much more from paying for quality food as opposed to having quantity of stuff that's going to be of lesser value uh, nutritionally to the body. So most people early in life spend their health to gain their wealth, and vice versa, and later in life they spend their wealth to regain their health. And certainly there needs to be a balance here. And if you sacrifice the quality of food or really anything in life, it's always going to catch up to you and cost you more later on. Having to buy 10 pieces of junk instead of one really good piece of food that's going to fill you up and make you feel full for a good portion of the day. So, you know, there's a million different things that we can discuss, but if we really narrow it down and focus on the really big five Bs, getting them moving, that's going to make a huge difference as far as being able to lose weight. First, the brain our bile, which we're going to get into, our bones, bowels, and our breath. And we'll get into each of those in a little bit more detail. So secret number one, stop dieting. A breakthrough study by Dr. P. Webb published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition revealed that calorie intake alone was not sufficient to predict weight loss. And most people believe that you lose weight by cutting calories or fat, eating only one meal a day or only certain foods, or by starving yourself. Research findings published by Liebel, Rosenbaum, and Hirsch show that the reason these diets don't lead to permanent weight loss is because the body adjusts its energy requirements as it loses weight. And this results in a resistance to maintaining weight loss, even with a low calorie intake. So the secrets to weight loss, really, it isn't about dieting. The secrets here is about your metabolism or how your body converts food into energy or fat. Metabolism is dependent upon the amount of muscle you have and the balance of your hormones. So since your metabolism occurs primarily in the muscle tissue, the more muscle mass that you have, the greater chance that you have of increasing your metabolism. Women have a 10% slower metabolism than men, and that's why they have more of a problem with weight gain. And your ability to gain or lose weight and have the energy, or be fatigued for that matter, is also dependent on the hormones secreted by your pancreas and your thyroid. Thyroid hormones basically speed up or slow down the conversion of sugar to energy in order to keep your body temperature at 98.6 degrees. So people with slow thyroids have trouble losing weight and they get cold easily and they feel tired. 
thyroid problems may not always show up in blood tests. And this is one of the issues. Now, I'm not against blood tests whatsoever. They're incredibly important. But the body has an incredible ability to keep everything in completely normal levels. And let's just take, take for example, uh, a liver panel that we're going to do in blood tests. Ultimately, what's going to happen is we're looking for a liver that's so diseased and so sick that those cells literally are dying and breaking open. Their contents ended up in the bloodstream, and then you can actually measure it in the blood. But we, there's a huge disparity between an optimally functioning liver and all of the stages that it goes through until it's that sick and diseased before something's going to show up in the blood. Uh, it's just not a going right directly from completely healthy to, to a very miserable situation. Um, and that's where blood drawing and, and, and blood tests ha has a little bit of a, a disadvantage as far as trying to show something as early signs and detection. Um, yeah, there's so many times I've seen people come in with every thyroid symptom that you could imagine, yet their blood work looks completely normal. So, you know, they're certainly not at optimal health. It just hasn't shown up in that particular test. So maybe there's some other tests that we need to run that's going to show more of the functioning in between those levels between optimum function and is uh, and allows the situation. So... A simple test for your thyroid function is basically to take your temperature in the armpit for two minutes upon waking, and it should be 97.6 degrees or higher. Use one of those mercury thermometers. A second group of hormones most related to weight loss are those secreted by the pancreas. One is insulin, which either, it basically is going to take sugar from the bloodstream and puts it into the cells, or it's going to store uh, it as fat resulting in weight gain. Um, and that's one of the really important hormones. And the other side of it, we've got a hormone called glucagon, which basically takes fat from the body and breaks it down to use it for energy, which is going to result in weight loss. And they kind of work opposing to each other. So our early ancestors consumed less sugar in a year than we now consume in a day. And just to kind of show it in this graph here, you can see on the bottom about 500 AD where we were almost next to nothing. We, they averaged about 12 pounds of sugar a year. Now, you know, on this particular graph, it shows about 150 pounds per year. You know, now, in the year 2010, we're more close to 250 pounds of sugar per year. Uh, you can actually follow this exact graph and right in line with it, you'll see the amount of cancers and heart disease and diabetes going exactly along with the, the exact same type of a curve in the same timeline as well. But because of these large amounts of sugars we consume, the pancreas produces more and more insulin. Now remember, insulin is the key that opens up the doors of your cells, allowing sugar to go from the bloodstream and bring it into the cells so that it can be used as energy. But the problem is, at some point, the cells close their doors. They just can't take any more sugar coming inside the cell. So the cells actually become resistant to insulin. And this is basically what happens is an insulin resistance, and that's leading to a pre-diabetic and a diabetic state. And it's ultimately, for, for most individuals who weren't born with a problem with their pancreas, this is something that's actually just earned by their life's decisions. They earn that diagnosis of having type 2 diabetes. So as a result, glucose builds up in the blood, and this leads to type 2 diabetes. And you know, it used to, it's kind of scary, it used to be called adult onset diabetes. But kids these days that are very young are already earning this distinction, uh, and these ICD-9 codes these uh, uh, diseases much, much earlier. So they had to change the name to type 2 diabetes as opposed to uh, adult onset diabetes. And recent studies have found that some 16 million Americans may suffer from the condition prediabetes. And this condition of high blood sugar levels is the precursor to type 2 diabetes. And even a minor elevation in the level of insulin in the blood will block glucagon from breaking down fat. Now, just an interesting note, I was even reading some research the other day. Most people in most medical research want people's blood sugar to be under 100. Uh, but th there's some other research that I was reading that was saying that if we even had it below 75, that there would be absolutely zero chance of any tooth decay, and it would ultimately the, the healthiest of the healthy individuals if they can keep their blood sugar at a, at a lower level um, in the 75 range. So definitely very interesting. 
So diets won't work if fat can't break down due to the elevated insulin levels. And this is a problem. People have so much sugar and insulin in their blood. We cannot. It's absolutely impossible to out-diet and out-exercise your hormones. They're way, way too powerful. Just for an example, uh, certainly women are more aware of their hormones on a regular basis. Hormones like that are measured in nanograms and picograms, meaning parts per billion or parts per trillion. Tiny, tiny, tiny amounts in the in the bloodstream. But you know, especially women, but the the, the hormones we, we notice have such an incredible, powerful effect on the body. Uh, and that being said, you, you just you can't out diet and out exercise the hormones because they are so strong. So if we've got huge, huge amounts of insulin, it's one of Certainly it brings sugar into the cells and it serves a purpose, but it's also one of the most destructive, degenerative hormones that you can have racing around your body, and it literally can, can wreak havoc on your body in a lot of degenerative types of ways. So ideally, what should happen is that you eat many small meals throughout the day that are made up of foods that will nourish your body and help maintain and control your insulin and glucagon levels. You control insulin levels by eating lean proteins and complex carbohydrates such as whole grains, vegetables, and good fats. A high-protein meal decreases insulin, which is a great thing to have happen, and it increases glucagon, which is going to basically break down your fat, thus reducing stored fat and helping with weight loss. So secret number two, eat and drink only the things that are healthy for your body. Kind of makes sense. It's pretty simple, but it's kind of hard for a lot of people to do. But things like white flour, white rice, white sugar, and highly processed and, and refined foods, they basically they don't contain any minerals or vitamins, anything of real nutritive value, and, and they're not doing anything for the body. And actually, they're acting as anti-nutrients because they actually require vitamins and minerals to break down that junk in your body. So it ultimately is going to be tapping your reserves and your stores of nutrients in your body, which is going to make healing processes much worse. Um, and, and slowing down and decreasing your immune system and just wreaking havoc on your body. Uh, you know, the disease beriberi is caused by a lack of vitamin B1, and it only appeared in the Japanese population after they began to eat white rice. Brown rice and whole wheat contain the natural vitamins and minerals found in nature. In order to lose weight and feel younger, you should avoid bad fats, but not all fats. Avoiding the trans fatty acids and hydrogenated and oxidized fats found in deep fried foods, half and half, imitation mayonnaise, imitation sour cream, shortening, margarine, and non-dairy creamers. Remember, these processed foods and fast foods use hydrogenated oil. And the problem with that is they basically, they're like plastic, these fats, and they, they turn your cells into plastic, which makes nutrients getting into your cells and waste products leaving your cells significantly more difficult. And according to Walter Willett, MD from the Harvard School of Public Health, eating trans fatty acids, and particularly margarine, kills between 30,000 and 100,000 people every single year from heart disease. Now, let's, you know, that's a big range. Let's even just take the low end of that range of 30,000. Well, when we compare that in 1999 statistics, there's about 16,000 people who died from alcohol-related car crashes. That's half the amount of people who are dying from eating these trans fatty acids. You know, and we've got things like Mothers Against Drunk Driving and all of these TV ads all over the place about uh, drinking and driving and alcohol-related issues. But the, the problem with these trans fatty acids are exponentially worse, and uh, it, it's just a huge problem. There's not as much of a focus there for a lot of people. So things like drinking spring water. Recommended amount of water that you should consume in a day can be determined by basically taking your weight and dividing it in half. So if you weigh 200 pounds, you're basically going to be drinking 100 ounces of water every single day. And that's going to be, you know, you certainly add a little bit more the more that you're sweating and you're working out. Uh, but that's a, just a good baseline for people to be able to get every day. In a study published in the Environmental Science and Technology, such drugs as antibiotics, hormones, strong painkillers, tranquilizers, and chemotherapy drugs have been measured in surface, ground, and tap water. The U.S. water supply is 10 times the antibiotics as the German water supply. Avoiding drugs you know, is certainly at the largest cost that we possibly can. All medications have side effects. You know, most of them have a significant impact on the liver, especially. 
Um, you know, none of them are, are more damaging, though, than the, the ones that there are for pain. You know, All-American defensive back Kenny Easley was permanently sidelined from his potential pro football career after taking ibuprofen for an ankle injury that led to the destruction of his kidneys. Dr. William Bennett of the Oregon Health Sciences University estimates that drugs like ibuprofen are responsible for as much as 20% of all end-stage kidney disease cases in the United States. So, and that's just from something taking it as simple as something like ibuprofen causing that kind of kidney disease. And then when you add in all of the type 2 diabetic issues causing renal failure in people who have to go on dialysis, that's a huge, huge portion of the population that don't have to go through those kind of things uh, and can easily, easily be avoided in a lot of ways. So the common over-the-counter drugs like acetaminophen found in Tylenol and many other pain-reducing medications can have absolutely disastrous effects on the liver. And that's why in the commercials they basically tell you you need your liver enzymes checked every 11 nanoseconds because it's just such a big problem. And doctors have known for years that chronic pain sufferers who regularly take NSAIDs, which are non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, like ibuprofen, to ease their symptoms are prone to gastric disorders. They end up creating problems with uh, bleeding and ulcers. And there's an absolute huge epidemic of adverse drug reactions to non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. One of the country's leading arthritis experts and a professor from the medicine at Stanford University School of Medicine. The FDA believes anywhere from 10,000 to 20,000 deaths every single year are the result of severe bleeding caused by non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. That's a huge problem. And since the metabolism and conversion of our food to energy are dependent on a properly functioning body, one should try to avoid the consumption of unnecessary drugs. Drugs coming from somewhere, uh, someone wearing a trench coat or a white coat, they're still drugs and they still do a lot of uh, negative things to the body and have a lot of side effects. Secret number four, it's important to move our body. Earlier we talked about metabolism, so we looked at the relationship between metabolism and moving your body. The more active you are, certainly the more energy that you're going to burn. And movement could be as simple as dancing, golf, tennis, kayaking, hiking, taking a walk, any of those things. A recent study followed 40,000 postmenopausal women for seven years, and those who regularly engaged in moderate activities had a 41% lower early death rate than those who did not exercise. The California State University study found that a 10-minute walk is enough to increase the energy, alter the mood, and affect a positive outlook for up to two hours. And another study conducted by Harvard University concluded that brisk walking at least 30 minutes a day could reduce the incidence of breast cancer in women by as much as 40%. That's astronomical. That's, a, that's almost cutting breast cancer in half just by walking 30 minutes every single day. And the list goes on and on. I've got hundreds of slides that show just the benefits of walking 30 minutes a day. You know, and there's no drug that can compare to the, the health benefits of walking 30 minutes every single day. It's, it's, it's astronomical. And even just taking the situation where lifting weights and building a little bit more muscle, every, it works out to about if you put on 10 pounds of muscle, you're burning an extra 60 pounds of fat every single year just because you have that much more metabolically active tissue. You, you know, you, you're sleeping and sitting on a couch, you're still burning a whole lot more. Even putting on five pounds of muscle, you're burning an extra 30 pounds of fat every single year just because you have that kind of muscle. Uh, absolutely huge benefits to you know, just a little bit of weight uh, training. You know, research indicates that walking 30 minutes a day and reducing your body weight by 5 to 7 percent can cut the risk of prediabetes by as much as 60 percent. Yeah, diabetic situations in large part are completely reversible and, and always almost 100% avoidable to begin with. So therefore, to lose weight, you must look at how active you are and what prevents you from being active and exercising. And the primary barrier to physical exertion is pain. And since pain and stress have a negative effect on one's ability to lose weight, one must address these issues as part of the comprehensive program. So it's really important not to really work out. You want to play out. So playing six days a week for 15 to 30 minutes at least you know, makes it fun. Whether you what, Figure out whatever it is that's fun for you, whether it's picking up a basketball and shooting some hoops or you love swimming or jogging or whatever it is. Just absolutely have a blast doing it. You know, move the largest joints of the muscles in the body. The, 
you know, most people these days end up sitting on their largest muscle of, the, of their body, and then they're using their smallest muscles while they're typing in a computer all day long. And that's just not how our bodies were designed. You know, there are over 200,000 hip replacements every single year you know, because they, we never use a, their full range of motion. They go from sitting down to standing up, and that's about all the, the motion that they get. And it's no wonder they're degenerating and, and creating a lot of issues for people. And the most mitochondria, which is your energy-producing powerhouse of your cells, the, are mostly in the muscle, which will increase your metabolism. Psychology. What we need to do is take the emotion out of eating and basically eat to have our bodies act like a high-performance vehicle, eating for energy purposes, you know, eating to live and not living to eat. All we need to do is create a refined vehicle, not a rock-hard statue. Skinny isn't necessarily a healthy situation. You, know, you can be on an all-coffee and cigarette diet and lose tons and tons of weight. You know, obviously, that wouldn't be a healthy situation. Um, but you know, we, we, we certainly, there's a lot more powerful, healthy ways to go about doing that. Just as some basic guidelines for body fat, you know, under 30 years old, it's important for males to be somewhere between 14 and 20% body fat. Women are going to be a little bit higher than that, uh, about 17 to 24%. Over 30, increases just a little bit, not huge drastic changes. Um, you know, and certainly every vehicle, every body is a little bit different, and we have to work with what we've got. But let's create a body that serves our needs and we don't, uh, not a slave uh, for our body that we must serve. And secret number five, getting out of pain. We've kind of discussed that, discussed that just a little bit, but the cost to treat chronic pain in the United States is estimated at $470 billion a year. Massive, massive amount of uh, money going towards dealing with pain. And, and that, that's just physical pain, and we've got the emotional stuff that goes along with it, and we understand a little bit more of you know, people eating the way that they do to try to comfort some of that pain as well. And pain makes one feel old. Pain makes one not want to move very much, and it makes people take unnecessary drugs. And the primary cause of pain is physical damage to muscle and nerves. Now, one of the issues with losing weight is that people have this event mentality, that they just want things to happen immediately. And anything in life, whether it's health, success, weight loss, practically everything that we do is a process. There's no magic pill. It doesn't happen overnight, and most people are aware of that. Um, but when we have a plan and we, we, we see and know exactly where we're at, we've got all of the numbers and things ahead of time, and we can follow and track that along the way, and we've got a real plan and support system to be able to do that, uh, that's ultimately what's going to make the biggest changes. You know, certainly you could take one of those crazy weight loss pills that makes you lose 10 pounds of water in uh, a week's period of time, but that's not really losing the fat weight, and that's not really a healthy situation either. So biochemical and nutritional thoughts. Take things like our B vitamins from whole food sources. Part of those include choline and inositol, which are both lipotrophic factors. That means that they basically break down fats. They're like detergents in a way. Um, they remove cholesterol from circulation, especially in diabetics. Um, and lecithin basically is a natural sympathetic accelerator and anti-cholesterol. Lecithin is in huge amounts in eggs. So Mother Nature and in her infinite wisdom, even though that there's cholesterol in eggs, there's plenty of lecithin in there as well, which breaks down cholesterol. So, you know, the foods that are the healthiest for us, you know, Mother Nature knew what we needed, and it allowed for its breakdown as well, and they're incredibly healthy. So of all of those bees that we were discussing earlier, one of them was bile. And bile does several different things in the body, including uh, breaking down and emulsifying fat, and it also helps to detoxify the gut. Uh, and basically, most overweight people are nutritionally starving to death, and we, they, they, their bile starts getting much thicker and more like sludge. It's supposed to basically end up in the toilet on a regular basis, and then your body uses cholesterol and makes more on a regular basis. But as people have more junk building up in their gut and they're you know, more on the constipated side, they say the average American has between 10 and 20 pounds worth of rotting fecal material in their gut. You know, John Wayne had colon cancer, and they found it was roughly 70 pounds of rotting fecal material in his gut. No wonder that he died of colon cancer. Um, so what will happen is bile won't end up in the toilet. It will get reabsorbed over and over and over again and get really thick and sludgy so you're not detoxifying well. 
and you're also not breaking down fats as well. So certainly uh, one of the things that I use in the office quite often is something called AF Beta Food, which is basically a concentrated uh, whole food supplement that's made mostly of beet leaf, which has a, a great bile thinning effect. Uh, it can be beneficial for thinning the bile for weight loss purposes, but even when people start getting sludgy bile and creating uh, gallstones as well, it can help emulsify those and, and, and thin the bile out and, and help quite a bit. Stopping adrenal stress reactions. So any type of stress, it doesn't matter whether you're you know, having stress at work or relationships or what we're eating and not exercising and all of those different things, they basically create a problem that it affects our adrenal glands, which helps us deal with stress. And it doesn't matter what those are. It's the same exact reactions that would take place as though we were running from a tiger. So let's think about running from a tiger for a moment. Basically, when we're running from a tiger, we want tons of sugar in our bloodstream so we can have all this energy and, and be able to run. That's what we need to do. So when we're under stress, it doesn't matter in which situation. We've got plenty of extra sugar in our blood, so you know that can lead to and cause diabetic-type situations because it's on an ongoing, everyday basis. You know, we're running from a tiger. It's short-lived. And you know, when we're it kind of stressed that we are these days, it's every second of every single day that we're in those situations. So then you go to the next uh, issue where the chances of getting hurt running from a tiger are pretty high. So the body knows that. So when it's under stress, it makes your blood more sticky. There's more platelets, so it creates more problems for uh, stagnation of your blood and, and forming clots and things of that nature. Um, you'll have situations where you know, you're running from a tiger you're super aware of everything. Every sound, thought, you're just taking in information from everywhere because you have to be hyper alert, which means that you're not very calm and peaceful and relaxed, uh, which creates a lot of ADD and ADHD type symptoms. And a lot of that blood gets diverted from your cerebral cortex, which is your rational thought, and it gets diverted to your hindbrain, which is more instincts and reacting. Uh, you don't need to. You don't want to think a whole lot when you're running from a tiger. You want to be able to react and just be in overdrive and happening automatically. And that's where people end up on an everyday, regular type of a basis where they're more reacting to situations. Uh, and then when they think about it later, they're like, "Why would I do that? It's, it's just so unrational. That's not me." But they didn't have very much blood going to their cerebral cortex at that point in time when you're under a lot of stress. Um, we also produce something. Normally, it's called sex hormone binding globulin. When we're under a lot of stress, we'll produce a lot less of that. And sex hormones basically cause proliferation and growth of new cells. And these sex hormone binding globulins, they're basically proteins which bind up some of that sex hormone that's out there. So that we, you know, basically if we've got cells that are constantly growing and growing and growing in an uncontrolled way, that's essentially what cancer is. So we've got proteins that bind up some of the active uh, sex hormones so that they're not all active all the time uh, and not causing all this uncontrolled cell growth. But being under stress leads to a decrease in those proteins that bind up sex hormones, which increases the possibility in, in uh, issues with cancer as well. Uh, you know, and certainly the list goes on and on of problems that are caused by stress. You know, your immune system is another one. You know, your immune system, you think about the last time that you were sick, probably laid up on the couch for a week or two with almost no energy whatsoever because your immune system takes so much energy to function. Running from a tiger, your body doesn't care about your immune system. It takes way too much energy. It'll, it'll deal with that later. You know, but when we're under stress all day long every day, our immune system is under a, a constant attack, and, and that creates a lot of issues for people uh, where they're sick a whole lot more often than they need to be. So... Just some simple things that I use in the office quite often. Uh, Adrenamine, it's a whole food uh, supplement. It's one of the most important ones that I use for rebuilding and, and giving nutrition to the adrenal glands. Cataplex B is a whole food B complex. Uh, licorice, Romania, zinc, Cataplex C. A lot of people don't realize that our stores of C in the body uh, are, are highest in the adrenal glands and they get eaten up pretty quick when we're under stress. One of the other Bs that we discussed was the bowels and keeping those moving, you know, the natural flora for proper disposal of our metabolic waste. People don't realize that 60% of our immune system is in our gut, and it's a lot because of those good bacteria that are in there. 
Um, so taking things like fiber, preventing bowel uh, bacteria from degrading in those bile acids, um, you're creating a lot of other issues, which can raise serum cholesterol levels. Uh, I use things like Spanish black radish, which detoxifies the bowels and it moves the lymph. And your lymphatic system is basically like the sewer system of your body. And if it's not moving, you can't metabolize your fat. Uh, and if you want to limit the rolls on your belly, then limit the dough. You know, flour plus water equals paste. We remember that from kindergarten. Uh, and we get that stuff going around our body all day long, and we wonder why we feel so sluggish and fatigued and lousy all the time. And even whole grain breads makes you have a whole lot more mucus. And so many people these days are having gluten sensitivity issues, um, whether it's a full-blown celiac problem or just sensitivities to these grains. If we really think about it, through most of human history, we never really had enough grain to do anything with. By the time you were able to go out and find enough and then grind it down and bake with it, and then it's going to go bad within a day or two, and they didn't have refrigeration, and even with good refrigeration, that really good ground uh, grain and those breads that are made from it go bad even within a few days of being refrigerated. Um, so it wasn't a huge staple in our diet. And those loaves of bread, they, they're like 4,000 pounds a piece. Nobody even ate more than a, a, a piece of bread. Um, but then, you know, we take a look at the amount of cereals and breads that we're having for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and all the carbohydrate in between, and we see where we've gone from 12 pounds of carbohydrate a year up to 250 pounds per year. And uh, there's a lot of our issues as far as our health, our fatigue, our weight that we've got these days uh, just exponentially increases. So to lose your sugar cravings in two to three weeks, one of my favorite herbs is, that I use is called gymnema. Um, it's fun in classrooms when I teach doctors uh, or I show patients just right then and there. It's just kind of fun in the liquid form. You can have people swish around their mouth for a minute, and then you can take pure sugar packet, put it in your mouth, and it's almost like having sand in your mouth. It tastes horrible. It will anesthetize your taste buds uh, for, for a few hours. But in the tablet form, it really takes about two to three weeks, and you can actually get rid of your carbohydrate cravings pretty quickly. Um, and it also, over the long run, has been shown to increase the, the production of your uh, beta cells in the pancreas, uh, which is what's making your insulin in the first place. So it can regenerate those beta cells and help reverse a lot of diabetic situations as well. Cataplex B and Genamin we've covered as well. You know, that's one of the things. When we're under stress, we're craving sugar because we need that sugar to run from the tiger, essentially. Um, so the more that we can give support to the adrenals and we're not, our bodies aren't physically under that kind of stress, then we don't need so much sugar. So it really goes hand in hand and helps quite a bit. Um, you know, certainly the AF beta food we talked about uh, can help with sugar cravings as well um, as thinning that bile. And then we'll be discussing a little bit more of the purification, the cleansing kit um, as well can be really beneficial. Now, detoxification, a 21-day purification and weight loss program. Uh, one particular testimony, which is a lot of fun. Today is September 13th, 2006. I started my 21-day detoxification program on July 24th, 2000, 2006. You told me it would change my life, and you are right. And I know that uh, this is just the beginning to enjoy optimum health. The changes I have already experienced are clearer thinking. I was always in a state of overwhelm and felt in a fog. Physical movements. I lost 14 pounds, most of which was body fat. Also, before detox, I always experienced swelling in my feet, ankles, and hands. After detox, I have little to no swelling even at the end of the day. I have been able to get rid of three prescription drugs, and I no longer take Nexium, Ativan, or Premarin. And I have not been uh, to a fast food restaurant in eight weeks. My cravings are down 95%. Absolutely unbelievable. Another testimonial. Reaching midlife, I knew things had to change as I was feeling tired and could not take the weight off as easily. Uh, you started me off with the cleanse in August 2002, and after three weeks, I lost 13 pounds. Yes, the results were quick, and the best part was the way I feel. I have so much energy, it's not just a diet. It's a new way of life. The problem, what is toxicity? How do we become toxic, and how do we detoxify? How do we manage our weight properly? We live in a toxic environment. We've got 100,000 chemicals in everyday use that we didn't have to deal with until the last 100 years or so. Pollution and its pollutants are a serious problem, and pollution and its effects can be found in virtually every single place on Earth. The U.S. allows over 10,000 chemicals 
additives to our food supply. The average American consumes about 14 pounds of additives per year. Well, this number changes about 250 pounds of sugar per year and 8 pounds of salt. And we take a look at this slide. How many of these things are just the regular staple for what we eat? You know, we've got muffins and bagels and cereals and cakes and ice cream and pizza and spaghetti and fries. And you know, a lot of times when I'm in lecture with a lot of people, they'll look at that and like, yeah, that's basically what I eat. And this is lead, leads to the amount of carbohydrate that we're getting into our diet. And this is ultimately what leads to a lot of the cancers and heart diseases and type 2 diabetes and a lot of our chronic and degenerative problems. They're things that we don't have to deal with. I can't be full on 200 calories. Can I? Well, take a look at this and, and we'll see. Here's an entire plate full. That's about 200 calories right there. 200 calories of broccoli. That certainly could fill up a lot of people. 200 calories of apples. There's 200 calories right there with your half a bagel. You, know, you eat a couple bites of that and you're going to be starving. Uh, still, you won't even be filling yourself up, but then you know, an hour later you're really, really going to be hungry. 200 calories of a muffin, a little bit of brown sugar, 200 calories of chips. There's nobody on the planet that only eats that few chips, and that's 200 calories. 200 calories of nuts. M&M's. Nobody eats that many M&M's. A few eggs. that can uh, Three eggs can really fill you up quite a bit. A lot of good protein and a lot of nutrition there. 200 calories of our French fries. That's pretty small helping there for a lot of people. 200 calories of carrots. There you go. That'll fill you up quite a bit and give you more nutrition than you could, you could imagine. Nowhere as close to the, you know, there's just so much more nutrition in that than there would even come close from something like any of those things on that one particular slide, all the breads and pizzas and, and desserts. So how do toxins enter the body? They enter through our digestive tract, our food additives and our soft drinks and things like that. They penetrate from our skin, all the perfumes and lotion and hairsprays and through our lungs. Uh, the exhaust and toxic fumes and secondhand smoke, they're all coming in that way. Now the body has three options when dealing with toxins. They can bury them in the body fat, which happens for a lot of people. They deposit them in other tissues, or we can remove them. And the long-term ingestion of low-level toxins can lead to all sorts of different problems. And ultimately, what we label is disease. The organs of detoxification, we talked about our lymphatic system is basically the sewer system. We've got our blood, our skin, which is one of your, your basically your largest excretory organ that we have. You know, that's one of the first things when I know somebody's toxic or their bowels are backed up, when they start having a lot of dermatitis issues, skin problems, acne, you know, that's just the body trying to get rid of toxins. Uh, the kidneys, uh, urinating out uh, toxins from the body, our colon, certainly that's a, a common one people re readily think about. Our lungs actually are responsible for about 80% of our excretion. And our liver is basically the filter of our body. And most people would never think of going 40, 50, 60 years and never changing the filter in their car. You know, think about trying to clean out the, the filter from your liver, which is ultimately part of what we're talking about here with cleansing and detoxification. Overweight adults in 1988, not that long ago, those red states, increasing in 1992, 96, 1999 and in the year 2000, more than 35% of the people in all those red states are considered overweight. The prevalence of diabetes, type 2 diabetes, is becoming more common in the United States. From 1980 to 2003, the number of Americans who have diabetes more than doubled from 5.8 million to 13.8 million. And they've earned it. It's not something that they had some kind of bad genes or bad luck or something of that nature. It's absolutely 100% the decisions that are being made in that individual's life with the amount of exercise and the foods that they're putting into their body that are causing that. Take a look at soft drinks. The active ingredients in most soda is phosphoric acid, and phosphoric acid leaches calcium from bones, and it's a major contributor to the rising increase in osteoporosis. Drinking one can of soda every single day for a year equals 16 pounds of sugar. That's more than people got 
through an entire year just by drinking one can of soda every single day. And drinking that much soda will decrease your immune system for about anywhere from 6 to 12 hours by at least 50%. And that, that's what carbohydrate does. It significantly decreases your immune system. And all of that sugar and insulin is shredding the lining of your arteries, and so we don't bleed to death. That we're packing it with with plaques, basically, with, with, with cholesterol placking. And it's not a problem. You, know, you could have cholesterol levels that are off the charts, but if you don't have all the sugar and insulin and you're ripping all the artery walls, then your body doesn't need to plaster it and protect yourself from bleeding out in the first place. Sugar equals immune suppression. We just talked about that. Sugar can cost you more than your teeth. At an average of 130 pounds a person per year, sugar takes the cake. Cell-mediated immunity is depressed by 50%, and this is what we talked about for 120 minutes after sugar ingestion. What we want to do is consume our good fats, butter, organic if possible, our deep cold water fishes, olive oil, macadamia nut oil, flaxseed oil, oils from nature, the really good stuff. Staying away from bad fats. We already kind of discussed the hydrogenated and trans fats, elastra, man-made saturated fats, and hydrogenated oils. Another thing to think about, too, is the half-life of trans fats is 51 days, which means it takes 102 days to clear them from your body. So that potato chip that you might have eaten earlier today, the trans fats from that will take 102 days. That's over three months. It's about three and a half months before that's going to be completely out of your body. And that's affecting and turning your cells to plastic. So the reality is the ideal society with plentiful Fresh organic foods free of pollution, drugs, and stress is just, it doesn't exist. People are rarely, they take enough time for exercise, and we as a society need to be aware of the toxins in our lives and the effects of those toxins ultimately that they have on our bodies. And toxic overload in the body causes it to function in a suboptimal manner and suboptimal health results. Is what you're putting into your body transformed into nutrients or poison? That's just a really important question to ask. And understanding the process of detoxification. How tri triglycerides come from carbohydrates we consume? This is one of the big things in blood that I will take a look at is people's triglyceride levels. This is how I know. This is almost like a, a crap detector. If somebody says they've been eating really good and their triglycerides are off the charts, I know exactly how they've been eating. They can't lie to me. Uh, the liver converts and stores these carbohydrates, and too many carbohydrates consumed, and your liver becomes unable to eliminate, store, and process those carbohydrates. And the excess carbohydrates are converted into triglycerides, a fat in the blood which elevates the levels, and it can cause hardening of the arteries, poor circulation, and heart disease. Liver has a lot of functions, essentially detoxification, but it converts your thyroid hormones, it processes the body's sugar storage, converts sugar that you eat to usable energy. It creates bile, which aids in the digestion of fats. It removes hormones like estrogens and epinephrine. And has it's, in, it's to either directly or indirectly involved in pretty much every single function that takes, in, it takes place in your body. Incredibly important. Without getting into a lot of nauseating detail, there's basically three phases of detoxification that take place in the body. Phase one and phase two take place in the liver. Phase one, a lot of times, will actually take toxins and make them even a little bit more toxic. And then phase two, it'll get broken down further. And then phase three ultimately takes place in the kidneys and urinate out a lot of those toxins. So a de good detoxification program, what's its purpose? Basically, to support the function of the liver, stomach, bowels, blood, and kidneys as they're filter is uh, we're filtering toxins and xenobiotics from the body. Uh, the procedure basically provide the supplements and the mineral placement support detoxification process. One that I use in the office and I'm the most happy with is a, a 21 day uh, program from Standard Process, uh, their, their purification kit. Uh, it's absolutely incredible, and I've seen amazing things happen in the office with a lot of people with that. What can you expect? Improving your weight, digestion, elimination, reduced number of allergies and headaches and joint muscle problems for people, improving circulation and sleep patterns, hormone function, enhancing overall health, increasing your energy and overall uh, appearance and how you feel. 
The number one way to support your health and cholesterol levels, so I've seen so many blood chemistries change as far as cholesterol levels. And I'm, you, know, you look at some of the other lectures that are already on the website or other seminars that I do talking about cholesterol. I think cholesterol, is, as far as a health issue, um, causing all those heart-related problems is a 100% non-issue. And you can listen to those other seminars where I get into nauseating detail about that. Um, but keeping cholesterol levels at a, at a normal, healthy level uh, is something that I've seen people's numbers come down qu uh, quite drastically. Uh, so some of the things in there, SP Complete is the shake that you're doing two to three times a day. It provides multiple nutrients in a high bioavailable form, strong antioxidant protection, and it supports healthy liver function. Just some of the ideas that are things that are in uh, SP Complete, whey protein, flax meal powder, brice, uh, brown rice powder, buckwheat juice powder, Brussels sprouts, kale, choline, carrot powder, alfalfa powder, barley grass. Uh, you know, these are just some of the most absolutely powerful and nutritious foods that you could possibly be getting into your body. Um, so pretty awesome effects there. Another thing, week one, you're taking quite a bit of the SP cleanse, which is going to really be doing a lot of the detoxification that's taking place in the body, promoting uh, positive gastrointestinal elimination, kidney elimination, uh, supports blood purification processes, and, and cleaning out the lymphatic system as well. Some of the things in there, we've got juniper berry, which is a natural diuretic, red clover, which promotes cleansing of the blood, apple pectin, which is a great natural source of uh, soluble fiber, burdock root, which it promotes healthy kidney function, and it's actually a blood, blood purifier. There's some alternative cancer treatments that recommend using lots and lots of burdock uh, because of its blood purifying effects. Um, barley grass powder, it's a great source of chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is is the closest thing that there is in the plant world to a mitochondria. Uh, it's the powerhouse, and it's one of the most nutritious parts of the plant that we can get. Um, very powerful. Uh, Spanish black radish we discussed earlier really supports phase two detoxification. Oregon grape root, great, great source of antioxidants, and fenugreek, cholesterol metabolism. Uh, so that's a very, very powerful one. Gastrofiber, it's got some psyllium in it, which is basically a non-soluble fiber to help move the bowels along. Um, we got fenugreek, which contains the essential oils uh, and vitamin A and C complexes. Some colonosia root, which helps strengthen the, the, the smooth muscle of the bowels, which helps move and eliminate uh, our bowel movements. And some more ap apple pectin as well. And SP green food. SP Green Food is made up of five organically grown whole food concentrates, buckwheat juice powder, barley grass juice, Brussels sprouts, kale, and alfalfa. These are some of the absolute most healthy things that we could get into our diet and probably not high on most Americans' diets. And just by eating and getting these much concentrated organic foods into the body and, and changing that diet for those 21 days, that's where people just start melting off weight and sleeping better and their blood panels are changing significantly and health problems that they were told that they'd have to deal with for the rest of their life just seem to go away because you end up doing so many good things that are so positive and healthy that they just happen to go away. And who would have thought? Um, there's two ways of doing the cleanse. You can either use the gastro fiber. The other one is the whole food fiber. Um, they both excellent uh, situations. The, uh, certain issues that we can discuss on a more personal, uh, individual basis, but it can go either way with that. Uh, the purification diet, basically, ultimately what's happening is you're eating as much fruits and vegetables as you want. Preferably, you eat twice as many vegetables as fruit just because of the extra sugar in the fruit. But you, you go to town doing that, which ultimately you're cutting out all the junk from your diet, really, and then you're supplementing with all those different supplements in the cleanse, and the results really speak for themselves. So weeks, days one through ten, you know, really the first week, one through seven, you're taking uh, all of the, the SP cleanse and the gastrofiber and the SP complete, and it switches over for the second two weeks to a different set. Um, but that's all written up in the cleanse. Um, I've even done, people ask, you know, can you still work out and do things like that? I've even trained for my Ironman competitions, which is a 140-mile-long race, uh, doing the cleansing program as well. Usually what I will do, though, is add a little bit of the whey protein, a little bit of extra whey protein uh, to be able to handle some of those workouts a little bit better. But you know, certainly there's no issues with that as well. So there's a lot of different shake recipes. The shake by itself doesn't taste great, but you can mix it with all sorts of different 
uh, fruits in a blender, and it tastes absolutely delicious. So that, that, that's a, a great situation there. Um, drinking plenty of water, and you want to try to stick mostly to water. You can have some green tea. Uh, that's acceptable as well during the, the cleansing program, but certainly as much water as possible is going to be best. Um, possible side effects that people have, you know, think about, you, know, you ever know somebody who drinks 12 pots of coffee every single day, and if they were to stop for the next couple of days, they'd probably have a pretty good headache. Um, so, you know, we, we're rebalancing blood sugar levels in the body and removing a lot of uh, excess debris and toxins from the body. You might have a few headaches and some weakness and dizziness, some muscular aches and some skin rashes because that's, you know, we talked about our skin being one of the uh, largest excretory organs of our body. But, you know, th those kind of things ultimately after a few days uh, subside. The more water that you drink, though, that, that helps uh, significantly with that. But then the way you feel after those first few days is just absolutely incredible. So just a couple of different things. We've got some before and afters. Uh, before cholesterol level. Uh, on, on this blood work uh, being 344, triglycerides 787, heart risk is a 7.2. After the cleanse, basically cholesterol went from 344 to 182. Triglycerides from 787 to 108. Heart risk, a 7.2 down to 3.7. This is after three weeks. These numbers are just absolutely unheard of. There's, there's no drug on the planet that does anything that well. And this is just by doing incredibly healthy things. Nobody could ever argue with eating more Brussels sprouts and broccoli and kale and things of that nature. There's just nobody that can argue with that being a healthy situation. And here's the numbers that prove it, how beneficial. So before and after, again, another individual cholesterol going from 231 to 176, triglycerides 128 to 87, HDLs and LDL. LDL is dropping significantly. So... You know, big, huge changes. You know, pre-SP purification and post-cholesterol, you know, that dropping 72 points, triglycerides dropping 49, uh, LDLs, the bad cholesterol, dropping 50 points. I mean, these are just very, very common things that I see regularly. You know, while the purification program is focused on clearing the body and regenerating the organs, weight loss is a wonderful and natural side effect as the body's metabolism starts to normalize. And the typical weight loss during the 21-day program is somewhere between 8 and 15 pounds. I've seen as much as 35 pounds, um, you know, and certainly there are individuals for health purposes that aren't overweight that have done it. You know, if there's no weight to lose, then you're not going to you know, lose weight. You know, the, this really, really super skinny uh, individuals, you know, maybe a pound, uh, but you know, really ultimately the, the health benefits that they were more looking for is, is what the focus was. Um, and even some people on the more anorexic side that can't put on weight, they're able to start putting on some good healthy weight as well. So it works on both ends of the spectrum. So weight loss before and after, you know, one of the big keys to that weight loss, certainly we've talked about, is minimizing that simple carbohydrate, all the sugar and honeys and breads and cookies and crackers and all those kind of things. So a couple of case histories. Number one, patient, 80-year-old female that complains of severe constipation, indigestion, hypoglycemia, currently taking antacids and laxatives to control the symptoms. Patient also has muscle and joint pains. Patient placed on the SP purification program and a supplement to support her cardiovascular health. During the first week, she's developed a headache, which is often expected when an individual is releasing toxins. She continues the program, and her constipation was completely res resolved. Testimonial continued, I wanted to inform you of how my life has changed since detox. You told me it would, but I was skeptical at best. I was at a point where I felt I had no life, exhausted, constantly in pain, depressed because I couldn't lose weight. I was taking approximately 50 to 75 extra strength Tylenol and 40 to 50 Excedrin every week because my joints hurt so badly. That all changed the first week I was on the detox. For the first time in years, I slept soundly through the night. Not that fitful, restful sleep, but a deep, solid sleep all night long. My ankles and hands stopped swelling, my headaches went away, and I had unbelievable energy. I now come home from work, cook a healthy dinner, am actively involved with extracurricular activities, and even have the energy to exercise. And I no longer take any pain medications. I mean nothing, zero. I don't need my prescription diuretic, and I lost 26 pounds in three weeks. I have continued to maintain this healthy lifestyle since the purification and I feel better than I have in the past 10 years. 
Thank you for the opportunity to feel great and live my life again. Another one, I want to thank you for having a positive impact on my life and health and overall quality of life. I began to actually feel good in the morning. I, was, I looked forward to the day. Sticking to the plan was not difficult for me because of the t immediate results. Now, three months later, I can hardly express how much better I feel. You are so right about uh, you are what you eat. Now, remember, how well your body detoxifies determines our susceptibility to disease. And if we take in toxins quicker than our body can get rid of them, we're in trouble. Toxic overload is a silent killer. Toxins usually do not affect us or affect just one system of the body. It affects everything. And we want to replenish all of those nutrients that our bodies need, refresh our body, and rejuvenate it so that we can live the kind of life that we're meant to and be able to serve our purpose and contribute to the world and, and really be able to enjoy our lives and not have to say, oh, I can't do that because I'm overweight or because I don't feel well enough to. And on the the emotional, mental side of things, a couple of slides, you know, having vision. Most people are blind. Some people have sight. Very few people have vision to make enough of a change in their lives. Dreaming big and having an unshakable confidence uh, in reaching your goals and making it fun. And people who are blind will try with all their might to tell you that it can't be done or that you're wasting your time. Now, a lot of these people have never even had goals of their own, much less achieved them. So those aren't the people to be listening to and talking, uh, taking the advice from those people that you're reaching their goals. You know, if you, you go to the gym and you hang around people who are working out and they're losing weight and they're healthy people, those are the kind of people you want to hang around with. The people who are overweight and sick sitting on the couch at home, you, know, you don't want to be taking the advice from those people. There, there's, there's real reasons why people are healthy and, and have the kind of bodies that they do. Uh, on the healthy end of the spectrum. And we start hanging around those people and you start adapting their lifestyle habits and it's it's because of those choices that they have them. It's not something that they were just born with or, or lucky about having. And as you get closer and closer to your goals, more and more people will try to knock you down. And this is where your careful planning, intense training, and unshakable confidence propel you to the next level. You know, you take a situation, you know, when I played basketball in college, often we were, you know, first in the conference, and people are always, every single night, they're coming at us with everything they want. You know, you always want to knock off number one. And when people are, you know, seeing big changes, and you're losing lots of weight and becoming healthier, sometimes people, you know, they're a little on the jealous side, or even when people have the right meaning behind what they're trying to do, but they're ultimately, you know, pulling you back, and just, oh, why do you want to do that? You don't want to do it. And they almost feel like they're left behind. Um, don't let that affect you and where you're trying to get to and achieving your purposes in life. Not that your purpose is necessarily to be the healthiest, most athletic person in the world, but the healthier you are, the more that it can help you serve your true purposes in life, whatever it is for you on those individual uh, basis. And taking a chance. Most people who say they never had a chance simply never took one. Remember, luck is when preparation meets opportunity, and the harder you work, the luckier you become. And also remember that when opportunity knocks, most people complain about the noise. You know, I have so many situations where some of the worst situations in life ultimately have turned into some of the most incredible, beneficial things. People, you, know, you look backwards and you say, I'm so glad that that horrible situation happened because X, Y, and Z happened because of it, and it never would have otherwise. Uh, and that almost always happens. Um, and actually, for my new newsletter that's coming out uh, for the March issue, um, I was having a hard time coming up which quote I was actually going to use and listening to one of my favorite groups singing, um, Rascal Flats. They have a line in one of their uh, songs that says, I found that you find strength in your moments of weakness. Uh, and it goes right along with this quote on this slide as well. You know, you, your moments of weakness and the things when they're the hardest uh, in life, sometimes that's the 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 cause and the source of so much strength and, and positive things that come from it. So keep that in mind. And sharpening the saw, just take a real quick story. The guy is sawing away it, it would with a dull blade, and he's going on for hours and hours and hours, and a friend walks by and says, wow, that blade's pretty dull. You know, if you sharpen that blade, you could probably get that done in half the time. Nope, no, no, I'm, I'm too busy sawing. I don't have time for that. Uh, you know, certainly that takes a great analogy for things in life. When we refine and, and we can sharpen the blade a little bit and we make some of those 2% changes, we can get things done in half the time. We're way more efficient and we get way more results. If we just get out of our, our rat race and our 
our constant downward spiral and we take a look back and be like, okay, well, I can change this 2% and this 2% in there. And the results and the changes from those very simple things can be pretty dramatic in your life. And drilling the fundamentals. John Wooden is basketball coach. He won more championships than any other coach simply by drilling the fundamentals. Or you take somebody like Grandmaster Jun Ri, who has the same exact approach when it comes to uh, martial arts. Anyone uh, reaching a black, black belt, basically, he says, has to master seven moves. And the key is to not be always learning something new and something crazy. The key is to actually, actually master the fundamentals. And as boring as they are and as they can get, that's the difference between making it and getting it to the next level. You know, he'd have uh, students that would go to him and constantly asking him to teach them something new. He's like, you, you, you don't get it. You need to master this literally to the point where you don't even think about it. It just happens. And, and that's with that true mastery where life just happens effortlessly. And, you know, you, you see the professionals who are the best of the best of the best and they make it look so easy. They're not thinking about the individual components. They've put in so many thousands of hours of work that their brain doesn't even have to think about it. Same way that you're tying your shoe these days, you don't even think about it. It happens that naturally. Well, we keep mastering and mastering and mastering those fundamentals and we can get things, whether you're playing a sport or you're trying to lose weight or, or having any type of success in your body, where we've mastered the absolute fundamentals so much that they just happen and you don't even have to think about it. That's where true success comes from. And human beings were born to do two things. Make mistakes and do the impossible. And I promise you the more you do of one, the more you'll do of the other. Keep it simple and easy and fun. We've com uh, covered a lot of different things. Don't get paralysis from overanalysis. Don't overthink this. There's a lot to do. Follow the most important things and make small changes and try to have as much absolute fun as you can while you're doing it. And begin with the end in mind. If you fail to plan, then you're plan planning to fail. In goal setting and planning, the roadmap is basically to get there is the first and foremost thing uh, that must be done. So have a clear and understanding of why you want those goals. Know the reasons uh, it would give you the most pleasure to achieve those goals and fully understand the reasons that not achieving those goals would mean ultimate pain to you. Just having goals and plans isn't enough. Having that why is really that fuel that's going to help you get there. Uh, and this is what gives you that ultimate psychological edge when you don't want to get up and do the things that you don't want to do but are going to make the biggest difference. You know, people don't, even the best athletes in the world don't want to get out of bed at 5 o'clock in the morning and do the things that need to be done. It's, it's not always... You know, the most fun thing in the world, but having that reason why and that purpose behind it, it almost doesn't matter how much you don't want to get out of bed. You've got that purpose and that drive that, that gets you out of bed. You don't care anymore. So that's the end of our seminar for tonight. hope you uh, enjoyed that. Certainly uh, the multiple webinars, uh, mostly all Thursday nights, um, you can go to the website wellnesscny.com. Uh, and I've already under, on the left-hand side, under wellness topics, uh, for the member section, you just join. It's free. It doesn't cost anything to do that. And I've already, I've recorded this one. I've recorded most of the other webinars, and you can watch any of those at any point in time, um, which is a lot of fun. Certainly feel free to call the office, uh, 451-1152. Uh, you can order the cleanse. Uh, sometimes I have them in stock. If not, they can have them within a couple of days. Um, yeah, there's all sorts of great video footage on the website uh, under the services and techniques, uh, the six steps to wellness, um, lots of good things on there. Uh, just even understanding some of the services and techniques available in the office. Uh, you, uh, my diplomate in applied kinesiology, when you compare the, the medical field where they have uh, doctors who are like OBGYNs or cardiologists, things of that nature, uh, in the chiropractic field there's... Uh, specialists as well. I've got two specialties. One is in uh, applied kinesiology. I'm one of 85 specialists in the world uh, in, as an applied kinesiologist. Um, really, the long and short of it is kind of if you wanted to have be treated without drugs and surgery, that those would be the types of people that you would see. And I also now have my diplomate in, in nutrition as well. Um, so just a plethora of, of information that's available there and, and certainly uh, come into the office and we can work on a more one-on-one -on -one individual basis as well. Um, you know, so feel free to sh share these webinars with your friends and your family and I thank you very much for
for joining, and I will look forward to uh, seeing you in the office uh, soon.